Roxanne Taylor. She's a real estate broker who specializes in high-end homes out here in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. And Roxanne, welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show. Good morning, Chris. How are you doing today? Doing very fine. Thanks for making time to be here. Look, I, I know you deal with, uh, with high-end homes and th- th- that... And you and I were, were were talking a little bit before we got you on, and there there really isn't that much difference between the high end market and the conventional market, is there? No, not really. Um, the last six years of being in a recession, people got pretty conservative when they saw a lot of their dollars disappear in their investments, and mm-hmm. and money got tight. And I was. Listening to what you said about when they started giving money away to people that didn't have good credit scores to begin with and uh, no money down and they had no skin in the game. And, and yes, that's what really started a lot of this. I was, I was taken aback when we went through, quote, unquote, financial reform and Fannie and Freddie were left untouched. It, was, it, it just boggled my mind that the, the many people believe was the trigger for the financial recession, which was Fannie and Freddie and all of this bad paper that they introduced into the, into the system, uh, that they weren't held to account. But again, Fannie and Freddie are government-sponsored enterprises, and, and this current regime doesn't doesn't do uh, doesn't rein in government very well but i, I want to talk about the dfw market what you're seeing there in dallas fort worth and then also br- broader around the rest of the country are we are we turning a corner is the market recovering i don't know about everything in the rest of the marketplace but i do know a lot about dallas fort worth and first of all real estate in texas has always been so reasonably priced that we typically haven't seen the highs and the lows that the rest of the country has seen. So we were really the last area of the country to feel the recession. And quite Mm -hmm. frankly, a lot of us really didn't think it was going to happen to us because our real estate's always been so reasonably priced. Now, why is that? Why, why, do, why are we in this state, in, 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 and for those of you who don't know, I broadcast from one of the freest states in the union, the great state of Texas, in, in North Texas, in Dallas-Fort Worth. Why have housing prices been, as you mentioned, no huge spikes up, no huge drops down, which is a direct contrast to places like New York, like California, like Illinois. Uh, why, why is it that, that housing prices say, stay relatively stable here? They have and they have not been. It's just that our prices have always been more reasonable than other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Um, And I guess maybe if you're owning a home on the West Coast or on the East Coast and on the beach and all of that in in higher places, maybe because it is the value of the land. And land and space has never been that constraining here. We've got a lot of land in Texas, so (laughs) we can spread out quite a bit. All right. Um, uh, my guest is Roxanne Taylor. She's a real estate broker who specializes in, in high-end homes. She has a, a good pulse on the, the market in general. Talk to me about your feelings on interest rates. There is, you know, we've, they've been kept artificially low for the better part of, well, we're going on four years now. And every single time we get a hint of an interest rate hike, the market just tanks. And how concerned are you that interest rate hikes may undercut What's going on in the housing market? Mm-hmm. Well, it's because it's what was demonstrated this year. Last December, they actually took the rate down so low and made jumbo money available at one and three quarter percent fixed for the first 10 years through a number of major banks. And by March, it was to two and a half. And between March and July this year, that two and a half percent fixed for 10 years in jumbo money up to three million made one of the most brisk real estate markets I've seen in almost 40 years. But once we hit that July when the rate ticked up a little bit, Mm -hmm. it was just like somebody took the water faucet and started turning it off. So anytime the rate ticks up, um, people get concerned. But now we've ticked up a little bit and stayed there. And so you're going to really laugh, but I have a crystal ball sitting on my desk. (laughs) People are calling me and asking me, uh-huh. Should I go ahead and do something now, or should I wait till next year? And I tell everybody, you know, all the years I've been doing this, I've learned one thing: you look at the marketplace you have today. Right, right. You got you got to make you got to make the determination on the information you have at hand. And see, with me, I've always operated that way, that way as well. But 
I always I've had some pretty bad luck. I mean, I I invested in a brand new property in in 2006, just before the the the, the down. So I bought it. I I have this bad. Well, 2006 was the height of the market. That's what I mean. I have this 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 habit of buying at the top of the market and selling at the bottom, which is exactly the opposite of what you should do. But if you're going to sell at the bottom, then buy at the bottom too, because then yeah. if you or selling at the bottom and buying in the bottom at the same time, you're going to come out okay. Uh, Roxanne Taylor, she's a real estate expert, uh, on, on the phone with me now here on the Chris Salcedo Show. So the Fed continues to print money at what many believe, which I, and actually I know, at an unprecedented rate. I mean, they're doing it 24-7. Interest rates are low for now. How concerned are you that for those people making this choice of, of maybe getting into the housing market, uh, about another bubble? That, that, that we're just one tick away from another burst in the housing market. I've been doing real estate for almost 40 years, and these interest rates this year I have never seen before. So if you were ever going to think about buying or being conservative of where you're placing your money, I've always found that the value of land and real estate, although it goes through a recession, always comes back. Have, have the regulations in your mind, are they, are they the right-minded regulations? I mean, I um, e- even on refis, uh, you have to have this uh, 20% loan-to-value, that kind of thing uh, that, has, that has been instituted by the government. Are those positive steps, or do you think that they're constraining maybe just a little too much? No, kind of, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. When you refi yeah. in the past, people have been doing appraisals, but it's okay. We, we'll go for more than the value because the person's staying in their home, but that's what led us to where we got. So even having that sense of conservatism and the appraisal values I think is really important so that people aren't over-investing or overpaying or overdoing anything. Uh, one of the Salcedo Swarm on, on Twitter uh, has asked, uh, has basically uh, put in something I want to run up by you as well. Uh, this, this person, Noel, Noel Durham, uh, sells real estate as well and, and, and contends that there's a, a, a lot of foreign influence buying up real estate in America. Are you seeing that as well? <laughs> yes. Um, it just went through a case this week where somebody from outside the United States trying to purchase some of my land, one of my properties. And if they've got cash, that's great, but getting financing is a little bit difficult for them. And, and is, is, it, is it something that we saw, like we saw back in the 80s, I mean, there's a big worry that all the Japanese investment was going to be a problem in the United States. Uh, is there one central country that is that is buying up the bulk of the land and uh, that you can point to, or is it just foreign investors in general? I think it's foreign investors in general. They look at the United States as being a really stable place to put money in real estate. Wow. Okay. Roxanne Taylor, she's a real estate broker specializing in high-end homes in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Appreciate your time and expertise here on the Chris Salcedo Show. Nice talking to you.